Okay, hey y'all, it's Mary. We're doing another video. I did one on Instagram and I'm gonna post that um, on Patreon and then we'll put this one on Patreon or wherever. But these are the first video of with our lovely model, Amy. This is uh, Rachel, she's also one of our injectors. Um, Amy had the lines that came all the way out past that um, medial limbus line that you guys love to ask me about and love to talk about and love to not inject past, which we're not doing anymore. Um, this line, like, just forget about it. Just take it out of your mind and, and, and don't think about it anymore. Because Amy had lines that came all the way down pretty much to the edge of her brow. And by treating just on that line and not treating past it, that is how we spot people. And that is how if you don't relax this, then it's going to continue to try to work. And it's, in fact, going to work harder if the rest of your forehead is paralyzed. So I'm trying to help you guys understand. Because if you get this understanding down, it's like two, three or four things. You'll be able to do anything you want on the forehead. So oh, some of the other questions <clears throat> have been when people are getting these commas or they're not, because you're not treating over here, they're getting the extra line right here, or it's, it's just that line wasn't there before and now it is. And that's because if you paralyze the rest of the frontalis, those fibers are gonna work harder. So things are gonna pop up here that weren't there before or become worse that weren't there before. So we're no longer doing that. We're treating off of what we see. If we have lines that extend all the way down here, then for that gum, it put some Botox over here and start your injection points over here and move across the forehead that way versus just starting at that dumb line that is antiquated and should never be taught. Okay, now Amy had the lines to go all the way down. Rachel is a prime example of someone who does not. With that being said, I always, I always, and I say this very confident, like 99% of the try, time do what I did on Amy which was come to the edge of this brow and go up and start my injections that way she naturally has an amazing eyebrow I mean like look at her eyebrows those are amazing um and so and her and then her forehead over here it's not that it's any it's pretty average forehead as well um but her hairline comes down so just be aware that like her hairline is pretty close to this that doesn't mean I have like you can inject in hairlines people like don't be as scared of that so I don't necessarily want my injection point does to be right here although Let's talk about if you did put your injection point right there. Because the other thing that I didn't mention in this video is the orbicularis oculi, which that's why the look of three was kind of is a thing. All three of those muscles work together to fur your eyebrows in and really to lift your eyebrows up. But the top, like I said in the last video, the top of the frontalis, we now know, raises up when you paralyze it. And the top of the orbicularis oculi muscle raises up as well. Hence where brow lifts come from. So you people get very nervous about they're going to hit that orbicularis oculi because they're injecting too low. And it's like, well, actually, you'd cause a little brow lift if you did that. What a brow drop is caused by getting the frontalis too low and it's simply too heavy for them to lift at all. So it's not even a brow drop that much. You really don't see a lot of like this happening. You just see zero ability to do that anymore. And that's actually what's causing like a brow drop. I don't even like calling it a brow drop because it's more... You didn't really do anything to the eyebrows. It's really just the frontalis. But all that to say, I normally come over to the edge of the brow right here and draw a vertical line up. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna go up a little on the inside because I don't feel the need to actually inject her temple, um, just the way that her eyebrows are. But I'm gonna have her lift up her eyebrows hard as she can. She does not have a lot of movement over here, but you can even see like this, I don't wanna call it weird, but this action right here, that's her oculi muscle working when she lifts up. It's not supposed to, because our anatomy books tell us that it's not supposed to do that. But that's why having this understanding is so good. We can't work off of books. They're great to fall back on. And I know I, I, like, I like telling people, sending them to that one book uh, that's on our website. It's a, good, it's a good basis for it. But ultimately we're not training on patterns. We're training on people. We got to get away from all of these numbers and all and these lines and, and no one's forehead. Hardly anyone fits all that stuff perfectly. So we're injecting what we can see, falling back on what our little knowledge we know in our books, but we're still injecting what we can see. And that's what makes you a great injector instead of a good injector. So when she lifts up again, she doesn't have a lot of movement over here, but I'm she has a little bit and a little bit of her oculi. I'm still coming close to the edge of her brow, drawing a vertical line up, and my injection is going to start, my injection points are starting over here. That will keep this half of her eyebrow relaxed down. If I start on that medial limbus line that you guys always want to start on, which is where her movement is. She's one of those people that that's why that mo that line was like, invented and is taught on. If I start it right here, I'm neglecting any frontalis she has right here. This will all be paralyzed on this, on that side. I don't even want to draw it on that line. This will all be paralyzed. This is going to work harder. What fibers are over here? And then this will end up being the thing, the only thing that's moving and she's going to hate it because it's going to look weird. So what I'm encouraging you all to do is to come over towards the, air, the edge of the brow, if not all the way to the edge, draw a vertical line up and your first injection point is gonna be near that. You don't have to get super technical. It'll be married to your lines and to your dots. 
So relax again and lift up again. And where she, where she lifts up, hers are, like I said, since her movement really starts over here, I'm airing a little bit more over to the side, but I still want to be mindful of not neglecting that so her brow doesn't come up. Her line of convergence, relax again and lift up again. Her line of convergence is like right here. That's like kind of the top area of her movement. I, I will draw a little line of that. It's like right through there. So I want to stay on really or above but on that i like to tell people to say right on that line of convergence and that's how you're going to get your lift up instead of all depressing down a lot of you guys are injecting like across here and doing that that and that's why their people are getting so heavy and they're dropping brows because it's all relaxing down it's all depressor and brows are coming down and if you'll just the line of convergence is a fairly new thing in aesthetics it's only a few years old if you'll do your injection points high where that line of convergence is these are four unit injections then that's how she'll have lift and even that one was a little bit low i'm going to lift it up a little bit more like that even though i'm not married to my daggum marks so i'm not even good at marking lift your eyebrows up again hard 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 so i'm coming over i'm going to move over a little bit for her since her eyebrows are a little bit um, longer than the average person's. And then see, I already want to move that guy over just a little bit. So those are four, 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 four unit injections. And she's a perfect candidate for 20 units of Botox, which is the FDA approval. Now, really quick, I'll show you the two unit. <clears throat> uh, if I were using two unit injections, which I still use two units a lot. I am moving a little bit more towards these four, four point injections or the four unit injections. Um, but I still use two units a lot because I just think I can get a little more precise. But what people are saying is that the four unit injections maybe last a little bit longer and I'm intending to believe that now, which makes sense when you talk about dose equals, dose equals duration. If you put four units in a spot instead of two, even if the two units are close together, those fibers are gonna, that you put the four in, they have a heavier dose, they're gonna stay paralyzed longer. But if I was doing two unit injections, same thing. Coming up from the edge of her brow, I am airing a little bit over to the side. See Amy's video, the video I post right before this or after this, um, to see where on hers I went directly up. But I'm coming a little bit more over. Lift your eyebrows up. And then I'm staying high on where her line of convergence kind of is. And these would be my two unit kind of spacing and marks, which I'm really not good at um, doing this at all I usually end up with 18 I think 2 4 6 8 10 12 that's 14 and then she she's a pretty strong like through here I'd give her two a two unit here and a two unit there and I might even I'm terrible I cannot see I might even stack those two guys right there so with the two units I don't mind giving her some extra help right there uh, when I have less dosing up here it's the four unit injections you don't want to put four units down low like this, that's what's causing that sinking. So that's staying high on that line of convergence. But that's kind of a four unit, I mean a two unit injection pattern I'm gonna that I would do on her relax, Rachel. Um, make sure y'all can see that. Um, and that's how I would do her 20 units for, and you don't have to do 20 units. A big part of me kind of now wants to maybe take that one away. I might put it over here. I just don't want you guys to be married to your, to your dots too much. Um, but you can see the spacing for a two units versus a four units is just a little bit tighter for me, obviously, because I'm not putting um, as much in one place. Um, all right, I'm gonna take those off. We'll do her glabellar just because, I'm trying to think of what else I haven't said. <clears throat> Hopefully with between the two videos, you have a little bit better understanding of what's going on out here. So I'm gonna re-harp on this again, because this is a common question. If y'all keep talking about look straight, straight forward, Rachel. This medial limbus line is the outer edge of basically where her color on her eye is. And your book is telling you not to inject out here. So when she lifts up, lift up, she's a perfect person that it works on her. But the previous video, Amy, she had the she had wrinkles that came all right through here. And this and if you start right here and your first injection point is right here, you're gonna neglect all of this. If this is not paralyzed, when this all paralyzes and goes down, this is gonna come up and that's a spock right there. Or she, you're gonna miss her arch completely, which is kind of more right here. And she's gonna end up with a very arched brow just like that. So either way, it's arched brow or spock, neither of those are wanted. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Botox, so why would I put Botox over here? Cause it'll keep this down and relax. And in fact, some people put Botox like right here 
just to keep the tail down more so that then it creates a little bit better shape. You can see that like right there. So that'll give her a little bit like this. If you put Botox up here, she gets a little lift up here. That tail is kept down. Now I have a differently shaped eyebrow if I wanted more shape in my eyebrow. It's just understanding Botox, what Botox does in this frontalis. Higher up it lifts, lower down it depresses. The oculi muscle right here, higher up it gives a lift. That's why a brow lift, you're putting Botox right in the hair of the brow, just like that to give it a little bit of a lift. And then other places it depresses down, which is not as important. So the corrugator really fast, just like on the other video. Um, sorry, I'm like pulling your face all over the <laughs> place. Um, this is piercing, not alcohol, so at least it won't kill your skin. Okay, <clears throat> so look mean real quick. Let me use this. You see her, Jesse? Mm -hmm. uh, furry brow. And okay, so good. So on Amy, we couldn't. You can see the thickest part of her muscle is right here, right close to her brow. Here's her tail coming up right here. I guess I'll mark it. Hers are also kind of straight up. So once again, just like I'm going to put it right down where the muscle of origin, right at the where the bridge of her nose is. That's the meaty part right there. And then her other tail, it goes up like this. So the back end of her tail is like that. So this is the same thing for her as it was for Amy, instead of the typical pattern of boink, boink, and then I'll inject right here because that's what the book tells me to do, you would totally be missing the tail of her corrugator. You would hit the frontalis, which is lies under the corrugator right, right here, if the corrugator were even there. It's under the corrugator here as well. And you would uh, cause that four units right here would cause this brow to be so heavy and to drop because you're not even hitting it in the right muscle. So another reminder, your thickest part of your muscles are through here. And then this guy, this starts down on the bone, periosteum, it's place of origin, your corrugator, and it lifts up underneath there to the skin. So this injection is deeper, and then this injection needs to be a little bit shallower. Because if you go too deep on this tail of corrugator, you will hit the frontalis under it, and that's also where you guys are getting heavy brows, I think, because you're, you're poking this really deep, poking this really deep, because it's like the same muscle, right? But in fact, it's like treated as two different muscles, two totally different injections a deeper injection and a more shallow injection because that tail rises up and meets the skin right here. So it needs to be injected a little shallower and the frontalis is under it. So if you poke through the corrugator tail and actually lay all that product on the frontalis or in it, that's a really low place and she's gonna get heavy or drop there. Uh, and that's one way that I think you guys are, are doing it. So uh, I'm giving her 20 here too. It's just five injections of four. Um, and then if you watch on Amy's video, I gave her three injections of six because her cute little tails were so short, you couldn't even barely find them. And then if I need to enhance her, this is my first time injecting her, she's gonna inject her herself, so she'd probably enhance herself. But, and just like I said with Amy, her coming back to me to get an enhancement because something is off, okay, that is totally fine. I'm not giving it to her for free. She technically gets it for free this time, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm not gonna give that to her for free or anything. If she were a normal client, I might need to enhance you at two weeks. In fact, I'd encourage y'all to make those either virtual appointments if you're mobile or bring them back in if you have a space because it's another touch point for you, for your client. Um, and check to see if they need an enhancement. Um, and don't be giving away your two, four, six units for free because you're not fixing anything. You're just getting another face. And that's it. That's for entire, that's for two or three treatments at least. And then you're confident to know that's your person's face and you might end up touching them up um, later. Um, that's it, I think, on that. The injection, I don't really, I'll just go ahead, like I said last time, good lord, I'll leave her marks. Well, I don't want to inject through these marks because um, while that's a derm pen, you can temporarily tattoo people. So, um, I don't use, wipe off your marks or just inject beside of them. <clears throat> Do this. All right, now, like I said, I already have... So I'm gonna do four point injections on her. Lift up your eyebrows and come up from the tail and I'm gonna come over a little bit more just cause her hairline is down there and most of her movement is more central. One, two, three. You okay? Mm -hmm. I remember you being a shaker. Uh, <laughs> when I moved you, I, I didn't even feel that though, but I'm yeah. still like. <laughs> yeah, you just like shake right before I remember this about you. Um, lift up again and relax. And I'm staying on top of the line of her convergence. This is just another four units. The fours can sometimes um, burn a little bit. It's a lot of uh, volume for um, thinner skin up on the forehead. You can stay perfectly. Safe. Well, lift up for the camera and relax. It's going right in the, you can relax. Still kind of towards the top, but right in the middle. 
If you can't tell on the camera, I'm not massaging her dots or anything. I'm just, I was just getting her little, I don't want them to leave a little blood stain. Um, lift up again. And so normally, like I said, I almost always do come straight up from that brow, but all her movement really is centralized. So I'm going to come over just a little bit extra. She has a little vessel running right there. I don't want to bruise her. So I'm going to go right next to her vessel. Let's give her four units. And then her last four units is right here. She's nice and crunchy. Sorry if that burned. <laughs> all right. That's her frontalis. She does not need any more down here because she has an air in her forehead that you can clearly see where you wouldn't even be able to fit four more unit injections anywhere. So don't trick yourself into, um, into that. Most important injection um, for your eyebrow. Find where I'm, right where I'm going to inject away from the eyes. Again, once again, y'all, no need to inject in the towards the levator, the danger zones of the eye of the eyelids. Uh, you can relax. This is a little bit more shallow injection, like I said, which means it might burn her a little bit more. Blanching is totally fine. It's going to go away in just a second. Here, you can relax, Rachel, if you're not. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit deeper injection. <clears throat> I usually just doink them right in the center. Here's a doink. One, two, three. Get down low, close to the bridge of that nose, because that's where uh, your Proceris is the strongest. Look mean again. And relax. Right about here. This one's a little bit more shallow. And last injection, one, two, three. And that guy's a little bit deeper. All right. I really hope this video, and once again, I'm not pushing these. I'm just dabbing them to get, because I can't stand her having to pick off her little blood dots later. Um, I hope this makes sense. I know I'm racing through it and stuff, but uh, it really is the same thing every single time. You're seeing what you, you're watching her movement and altering your stuff based on her movement and not off of a book or whatever. Forget that medial lap. I want you to take that line and throw it out the window. Inject far lateral out based on the dynamic movement of the wrinkles and not on two centimeters above a brow and you know whatever medial limbus line and all these centimeters and all these drawings. Those are like I said great to maybe fall back on but ultimately if you'll just watch her watch her movement, understand how the Botox affects the top of the frontalis, it's the top third, that's your line of convergence, lifts up, your lower two thirds of your frontalis depress down. And if you understand that, you can do anything with a brow like I was showing you. You can shape and make brows very subtly, set expectations, but you can make brows do what you want them to do. You can make them more arched, you can pull the tails down, you can lift them all the way up, you can do a lot more if you'll just understand your anatomy. If you have questions or whatever, please send me a message. I'll try to post a ton of these videos. The more faces we see, I think the easier it is to learn. Um, it's just getting clients to sit here and let me talk about their wrinkles. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, okay, thanks.